my body's gone and failed on me. You know what? <laughs> Riding in the heat is so much worse. Oh, oh, fuck. Oh. My name's Ed Pratt. Over the last two years, I've been on a mission to ride a unicycle around the world. This video series documents my experiences cycling from the top of Vietnam down to Singapore. This is Ed Unicycles Southeast Asia. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right, after 49 days of riding, I feel like it's time for a recap of the series so far. I began the ride on the 1st of February from the very north of Vietnam. Soon after starting my Southeast Asian journey, I found myself part of a Vietnamese wedding celebration where the relatives slaughtered a cow and wore white face masks. I was refused entry into Laos for stupidly not having any cash on me. I then met some guys panning for gold in a river and proceeded to strip bare pretending to be Daniel Craig. I pushed myself hard to walk over a bloody steep mountain where on the descent my brake failed, throwing me to the ground. But I dusted myself off and met Super Cycling Man again while waiting for my Thai visa. Leaving the mountains behind me, I entered Thailand where I discovered the weather was far too hot but the discomfort I was feeling from the temperature was far outweighed by the hospitality of the people. As I was recently joined by a cycling club accompanied by the local police. I'm currently on a bit of a mission to reach Bangkok within the week because my sister is coming out to see me in just five days. All right, I think you're pretty much up to speed. Back to the cycling club and police convoy. After breakfast, I asked Bigot if he had any replacement pads. Luckily, even though my unicycle does contain many difficult to replace parts, the hydraulic Megara brake isn't one of them. With two shiny new brake pads, I jump back on the uni, this time joined by Bigot, his cycling mates, and a police convoy. Yeah, this day was going to be totally mad. Followed by about, I don't know, 20 cyclists and the police up ahead with their loudspeaker saying hey there's a Ghana unicycle this is weird right. <laughs> All right. oh, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. that was mental <laughs> I guess I'm alone again then that was incredible Police escort and cycling club and woo! It's gonna rain pretty shortly. The wind is really picking up. I think there's some kind of storm brewing. Thank you. I stopped at a roadside cafe in an attempt to shelter from the rain. I was riding along and I was like, oh, it's gonna rain a little bit. That's a bit of a dark cloud. Um, and then suddenly, they just opened up. Woo. I've got no idea how long this is going to last. I'm not, I'm not cycling off until... Oh, that's some lightning. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not leaving here until it starts raining. This is ridiculous. I soon ditched the cafe because the thatched roof was starting to leak. The ground around my unicycle was also starting to get saturated, so I threw on the rear pannier's waterproof cover and ran next door to the relatively dry petrol station. The rain never really did stop, but I got impatient, so carried on anyway. It did die off come evening, but I still opted for another hut camp that night, my thinking being that if it did downpour again, I was at least kind of sheltered. My thinking was correct. Do I need to say it's raining? No, right? Tell you what, that's not a bad find for a thunderstorm. If I was just in the tent, it would be miserable. But at least I've got a bit of shelter. And I found a hat. Yeah, it's definitely dying down. That seems to be what happens around here. It's like really hard for like half an hour and then it sorts itself out. That lens. Covered in water. Thankfully, by lunchtime, the weather had completely blown over and I could get back on the road towards Bangkok. That sign says Bangkok is 380 kilometers away. 
I've got to do that in four days. If I was going to reach the capital in time for my sister, I was seriously going to need to dig deep. Switch off and bought the locks. Check for any distractions. Turn the lights and close your eyes. How warming is the silence? It seems that here your dreams appear. Realize life's attractions Don't let them say it's not the way Appealed by defiance So here we go Taken from Your comfort zone Like a flower. Following a dual carriageway to Bangkok reduced the amount of miles I needed to cycle, but the tough physical exertion and constant exposure from the sun soon started to wear on my body. Don't take my word, I just say you should adapt to your own way of thinking. Deep in the mud, I'll lend a hand. You may feel left in. A bit sweaty then. A bit sweaty. Mouth being stripped of flesh and bone. These things we hold materials. Slept to work. Have you seen the world? The parts of something beautiful. My dehydration got to a point where it didn't seem to matter how much water I was drinking. I still felt terrible. Even so, I kept pushing myself to keep riding. Far too late, I upped the amount of salt I was consuming in an attempt to make myself feel better. All right, so I stocked up on a bit of salty food. I'm gonna try and push out another 30 miles in this dark. I think I'm on about 40. I'd love to get to 70 miles today. We will see. My body's gone and failed on me. Like, uh, I, I feel awful. I, turn, I turned off the main road. Um, I saw a sign that said like 900 meters to a, to a resort. Um, they're charging me 500 baht, which is too much. It's like 12 quid or something, which I don't really want to pay, but I kind of, I kind of don't have any choice. Uh, I, I'm done. Like, I know I've said I'm done before, but I'm like, I'm like, I, I can't think. I'm, my head is just spinning. My body is just cramping up. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, well, this is what I've done. I found someone to sleep, which is good. Because I, I just, I didn't have the energy to like find someone to put the tent. And I didn't have enough water and I need to find water for the tent. and. And I honestly don't think I'm, it's safe, the way that I'm feeling at the moment, to, uh, to, to sleep in my tent. Um, I don't feel well. I, I really, I, real, I feel pretty, pretty awful. I thought riding, when I was in China and when I was in like Kazakhstan and places like that, where it was cold, I thought that was pretty, I thought that was pretty bad. I thought, wow, this riding in the cold is pretty, pretty hard going. Um, you know what? <laughs> Riding in the heat is so much worse. Oh, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. So that's how I wound up on the floor of a hotel room with my legs cramping up from dehydration. Reflecting on this later, I definitely feel like I was drinking enough, but the issue was I failed to effectively replace the salts I was losing in my sweat. 
Even though I was guzzling around 10 litres of water a day, my body was struggling to actually use the fluids I was putting into it. This was certainly a very humbling experience, and the takeaway was clear. Make sure you're putting the correct stuff into your body, really, any time, but especially if you're going to try and attempt something as stupid as unicycle down a dual carriageway in 90% humidity and 35 degree heat. Good morning, still at the resort, just waiting for some food. Got some coffee, which, uh, which is good. Head is feeling much better, I'm feeling a lot more with it. <laughs> Yesterday was just awful. Um, I'm hoping that I feel alright. I've got some food coming. Good come, Cap. Thank you. That's great. Some food. Chicken fried rice. Not wanting a repeat of the day before, and because my sister was literally flying out the next day, I made the decision to pause the ride there and stay put at the resort. Staying in air conditioning and resting for the day felt amazing, especially as the way I was planning to reach Bangkok the next day was a little unconventional. Alright, so good morning. Today is an exciting day because I'm going to Bangkok. Not going to be cycling, I'm going to be trying to hitchhike. I've got about 100 miles to cover. This is a shot for when I return in about two weeks time. There's a bridge. This is where I cycled to, pretty much. I just need to walk to the bottom of those steps. Uh, and then we'll set off from here. So this was my new challenge. Hitchhike 110 miles to Bangkok. Should be simple enough, right? I want to find a car to take me on this road. And you, you go to this road, yeah? By broken. Broken, yeah. Well, no, I am broken. <laughs> I see, big truck. Great dude, great dude. Okay, okay. Go, go, camp, right. Camp. Thank you. <laughs> Rai kindly took me the five miles to the main road. Now I just have to find someone willing to take me the remaining distance to the capital. <laughs> Spari, Spari, you go Bangkok. Concho Arai Cap. Uh, Ed. Uh, Ed. Edward. Edward. What's your name? My name is Peter Pong. Num, num, num. 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 Jen. Mr. Jen. Mr. Jen. Mr. Jen. Mr. Num. Num. Cool. Mr. Num said he was very happy to drive me to the outskirts of the city, but from there I'd need to catch a taxi to my sister's hotel. During the two hour journey, I asked him to try and teach me Thai numbers. Yes. <laughs> and of course I'm a little bit disappointed about having to kind of hitchhike out. I'd have loved to have kind of rode in and kind of rode my bike to the, the hotel and kind of done the whole heroic I made it to Bangkok kind of thing. Um, but this way is fine and my body just wasn't holding up. I've just been feeling properly faint for the last four days. And uh, yeah, this two weeks, it's going to be a good good time to have a bit of a rest, to sort out some levels of my body. And of course, seeing my sister for the first time in one and a half years, also, it's pretty cool. Last time I saw her, we were in Georgia. It was when my parents and my sister came out to Georgia. We spent a couple of weeks there. Uh, that's the last time I saw her. And I've never met her boyfriend, Nick. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a really good two weeks. Just doing something a bit different, just, yeah. A few Brits just hanging out in Thailand. I thanked Mr. Jen and Mr. Nom for driving me, then flagged down a taxi prepared to take me and my unicycle the remaining 10 miles to the hotel. So this is Mr. Withaya? Yeah. Withaya? Yeah. And he's taking me to Bangkok. I think we've worked out where we're going. Okay, and there's the unicycle a bit, so. Uh, Taking the part in the back there. It's mounted unicycle. I was getting close and very excited. Okay. Yeah. 
Let's do a thigh. <laughs> cool, come cap. Yeah. Thank you. What time do you call this? <laughs> How's it going? Four. Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. How are you Jim. doing? Thank you for watching this instalment of Ed Unicycle Southeast Asia. It's, it's incredibly exciting to be able to finally share these videos with you. I think they're the best that I've ever made. Basically, if you want to watch them all right now and you don't want to wait every week for a new episode to appear on YouTube, you can go over to Vimeo and there you can binge watch the whole series. So I'm trying something a bit different with this series and I'm putting it up for sale for people that want to see it first. And basically this will help support the editing process because I've still got all of the US videos to edit and the videos cycling down through the UK to finish off my world unicycle tour. All of that is still need, in need of editing and it's going to take months because this four months of footage cycling through Southeast Asia took three months to put together. I imagine it's going to be pretty similar putting the rest of the videos together. So basically, if you want to watch all the videos, all the Southeast Asian videos right now, you can. And it'll also be supporting me while I'm putting together the future videos. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next week for Ed Unicycle Southeast Asia or right now if you decide to go over to Vimeo.